Yes, solve problems can sometimes be a little bit challenging to parse, so we're going to work through a gas law problem step by step to talk about how we can solve these problems using the right gas law equation. Our first step is going to be identifying the type of problem. First of all, is it a gas problem? For it to be a gas problem, there has to be gases involved. So make sure that you're using the gas law equations based off of gases. Next, you need to figure out what type of a gas law problem are you dealing with. Are you doing one of the combined gas laws, or are you doing the ideal gas law? So combine or ideal. Okay. I've got two different problems here. This first one, the temperature of a sample of NO2 is changed causing a change in volume from 67.344 liters to 90,476 milliliters. If the starting temperature was 316.63 degrees Celsius, what is the final temperature in Kelvin? So that's one problem. The other problem, we're talking about how many moles of C3H8 are in a 8,369.5 milliliter container at 2.35 milliliter container. 41 atmospheres and 87.42 Kelvin. So these are two different types of problems. In this first problem, we see that there's a change happening. So there's a change in volume and there's a change in temperature. When there's a change, we're going to be using one of the combined gas laws. So those are the ones that have subscripts, like P1s or B1s, because there's also P2s or V2s. We'll talk about which equation in a moment. The second one, we're talking about the moles of C3G that are in a particular container. This is in one moment in time. So notice there's only one volume, there's only one pressure, there's only one temperature here. This tells us that we're going to deal with an, the ideal gas law. So that's our PV equals NRT. So first we distinguish between those. For the rest of the examples, we're going to, steps, we're going to go through this particular problem here, this first one. Next we want to identify the equation that we're going to need to use. Now to do this, we want to pull apart what's in our problem. So I'm just going to pull the information out of my problem. I have a causing a change in volume from 67.344 liters. So liters is a volume. And we have volume changing, because remember we're talking about change happening. So this is going to be my V1. So I'm going from my V1, 67.344 liters. Two, so this is my start, and this is my end. I'm going to 98,476 milliliters. So that's going to give me my V2. I, my starting temperature, so my T1, is 316.63 degrees Celsius. And I'm looking for my final temperature. So my T2 is unknown. So notice I've got a V1, I've got a V2, I've got a T1, and I've got a T2. So I look at my gas law equations. So I'm taking a look at the equations and equivalencies from your note packet. So you should pick that up or you, know, you can find that in the course information. And I can look at my equations here, and I want to look for one that has a V1, a V2, a T1, and a T2. So I have equation right here, my V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So I've identified my equation, I have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's my, I finished my second step here. My next step, I need to look and see whether I need to convert any units so let's take a look. Now if we take a look at the units that we started with, so my V1, my V2, 
T1 and T2, our units need to agree throughout. So notice for this V1, I have liters. This V2, I have milliliters. Those need to be in the same units. Since this equation doesn't specifically tell me what volume I need to be working in throughout, I can choose to work in milliliters or in liters. So you can do it either way. For this, I'm going to convert into liters. So I'm going to convert this milliliters into liters. So I'm going to multiply by, I have one for every one milliliter, I have 10 to the negative third liters. So I'm going to get 98.476 liters for my V2. For my temperature, notice I'm looking for Kelvin for my answer. Also, whenever I'm doing a gas law, the temperature must be in Kelvin. Remember, you cannot do any other unit. To convert it to Kelvin, I'm just going to add 273.1. So my T1 should be 589.78 Kelvin. So let's take a look at what I do next. So I've got everything in the same unit. So liters to liters, Kelvin to Kelvin. My last step is going to be rearranging the equation, if needed, and solving. So if I look back at my equation, I have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. I'm trying to solve for T2. So I need to make sure that T2 is by itself. Notice T2 is at the bottom of my fraction here, so I'm going to multiply both sides by T2 first, so T2 over 1, to get it out of my fraction. So my T2 will cancel on this side. I'll have T2 times V1 over T1 equals V2. And yet I want to get T2 by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by T1 over V1. So T1 over T1 is going to cancel out, and V1 over V1 is going to cancel out. Whatever I do on one side of the equation, remember we have to do on the other side as well. So I'm going to get my T2 is going to be equal to V2 times T1 over V1. Now I plug in my values. I have V2, so that's 98.476 liters. T1, 589.78 Kelvin. V1, 67.344 liters. Put that in my calculator. If I plug that into my calculator, I get 862.42538, and it keeps going. Uh, my units here, liters are going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with Kelvin. That's what my problem asks for. So that's my units. Now I need to make sure and round this for significant figures. If I look in my problem, three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, significant figures throughout. So I'm going to round this to five significant figures, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm going to get 862.43 Kelvin.